Now we're going to look at triangles and three theorems. Uh, there are many theorems. We're going to look at three of them that go along with triangles. So first, a quick review. We can name triangles based on sides and on angles. So if I want to name a triangle based on its sides, okay, I'm talking about congruent sides. If all three sides are congruent, we call that an equilateral triangle. If all three sides are not congruent, they're all different, we call that scalene. And then if only two of the sides are congruent, we call that isosceles. And then based on angles, right? If I have all angles that are less than 90 degrees, that's going to be an acute triangle. And if all of the angles are the same, which would make them 60 degrees, which is also less than 90, we call it equiangular. All right, if I have one obtuse angle, it's going to be an obtuse triangle. Okay, and a, a side note on that, we know a triangle has 180 degrees, and an obtuse angle is more than 90. So if I have one angle that's more than 90, I can't have any other angles more than 90, or it'll bust the 180 maximum. All right, and then uh, if I have one 90 degree angle, that means it's going to be a right triangle. And that's the same idea. If I have 90 degrees for one angle, I can't have another one or I'll hit 180 before I get three angles. Okay. Now, the three angles we're going to look at, the first, or three theorems we're going to look at. The first one is the triangle inequality theorem. And that tells us that the sum of any two sides must be greater than the third side. If it's not, then that means that it's not a triangle. It can't possibly be a triangle unless the sum of two sides is bigger than the third side. Okay, and it, you technically test all the different options, but I'll show you a shortcut in a second. Okay, the Pythagorean theorem, which I'm sure you've heard of by now, says that if I know it's a right triangle, then I know that a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared, and that c has to be the hypotenuse, and your hypotenuse is the longest side, and it's across from the right angle. Okay, the converse to the Pythagorean theorem is the opposite of that. It says that if I plug in my a, b, and c, and it fits the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then I know that it must be a right triangle. Okay, so these are opposites. The first one is I'm told it's a right triangle. I know this works. The second one I plug in, and if it works, then I know it's going to be a right triangle. So you got three types of questions here. The first round is just asking if it's a triangle. So that goes back to the inequality theorem. So I'm going to test to see if it is a triangle. Now, instead of having to do 4 plus 11 and then 11 plus 13 and 4 plus 13, if you just add the two smaller sides, Okay, the two smaller sides are the ones that we can use to check. So that means I'm going to add these two together. Right, well, 4 plus 11 is 15, and 15 is greater than 13, so yes, those sides make up a triangle. For the second one, my two smaller sides are 8 and 8. Okay, so 8 plus 8 is 16, but 16 is not greater than 16, it's equal to. So that means, no, it's not a triangle, it's got to be greater. And then for the third one, we got 12 and 15 which gives us 27, and 27 is less than 30, not greater, so that one's also not a triangle. So it can't be equal and it can't be less. The smaller two sides have to add together to get something bigger than the third side, or it won't have enough uh, sides to make a triangle. Okay, for a right triangle, okay, this one, we're kind of going out of order here. We're going to do the converse to the Pythagorean theorem because I just want to know if these three sides make up a right triangle. And to do that, we're just going to plug it into our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but we got to make sure c is going to be our hypotenuse for the longest side. If it's true, it's a right triangle. If it's not true, it's not a right triangle. Okay, so for the first one, I've got 20 as my longest side. Okay, so that means that's got to be my C. So we're going to say 12 squared plus 15 squared, and I want to know that if that is equal to 20 squared. Well, 12 squared is 144, right? 15 squared is uh, 240, 225, excuse me, and 20 squared is 400, right? If I add 144 and 225, 
I get 369, right? Those are not equal. So no, it's not a right triangle. Okay, for the second one, 14 is my biggest side. So we're going to say 9 squared plus 10 squared has to equal 14 squared if it's going to be a right triangle. So we have 81 and 100, and then 14 squared is 196. So this one ends up with 181 equals 196. So it's close, but no cigar. So that one's also not a triangle. I'm sure I meant to have one of those be a right triangle, but they didn't work out. So if it's equal, it's going to be a right triangle. If it's not, it is not a right triangle. Okay, and then the last two, I want to find X, right? So because I'm told that it's a right triangle with that box and the angles, let me make sure we can see good. Okay, then that means I can use my Pythagorean theorem because I know it's a right triangle, so that means that A squared plus B squared is going to equal C squared. Okay, so in this case, my hypotenuse is over here, and that's X. So when I write my equation, we get 10 squared plus 24 squared equals X squared. All right, 10 squared is 100. 24 squared is 576, and that equals X squared. So then I get 100 plus 576 is 676 equals X squared. All right, and then to get X by itself, I have to take the square root of both sides, All right? And then 676 is actually a perfect square. So I get x equals 26. Okay, for the second one, 13 is my hypotenuse, so that's my c, and then a and b doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna say x squared plus seven squared has to equal 13 squared. So x squared plus 49, has to equal, uh, let's see, 169. And then I'm going to solve for x squared. So I'm going to start by subtracting 49 from both sides. Uh, so 169 minus 49 gives us 120. Okay, and then I have to square root. Now, 120 is not a perfect square. All right, so that means I'm going to have to break it down. I'm going to have to simplify my radical. Okay, so I'm going to start with a factor tree. What comes to mind first for me is that 12 and 10, since it ends in a zero. 12, I can rewrite as three and four. Four, I can write, oh, run out of room, as two and two. And then 10 is two and five. And again, I don't need 12, don't need 10, don't need the four, because I branched out. Okay, I've got a pair of twos here, and that's it. I can't circle the three, I can't circle the two, and I can't circle the five. So that means that I'm left with a 2 on the outside, and on the inside I've got 3 times 2 times 5. All right, well, 3 times 2 is 6, times 5 is 30. So that means that x, oops, x equals uh, 2 root 30. Now that's my exact simplest form. Based on the question, it'll tell you, you know, if you want to round to the nearest tenth, then you go ahead and plug it in your calculator, or if it wants to leave it as a simplified radical. All right. So you've got to be able to tell me if it's a triangle, if it's a right triangle, and then if I give you a right triangle, you have to find the missing side using the Pythagorean theorem.